Tuta mai i runga, tuta mai i raro, tuta mai i waho, tuta mai i roto. Kia tu ai te mori tu. Te mori ora ki ti katoa. Umie huie tai kia. Kia ora koto. I'm James from the Sustainable Business Network and it's a pleasure to be your host for this um, lunchtime session as we launch Aotearoa New Zealand's Circular Economy Directory. And the directory we're launching today is a major new tool to help New Zealand businesses scale as a, and, and uh, speed up the transition to a circular economy. And of course, when we're talking about a circular economy, we're talking about an economy where waste and pollution, including carbon emissions, have been designed out and reduced. We're talking about where the valuable materials that we currently have are kept in circulation for as long as possible, rather than being thrown away. And then those natural systems that we are, of course, dependent on are regenerated rather than degraded as part of our economic activity. Now, this directory is the first major launch from our public-private partnership, Go Circular 2025, with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, Ministry for the Environment, Waste Management NZ, Auckland Unlimited and Auckland Council, and Amio Mio. Aotearoa. So how this launch is going to run is as follows. Firstly, we're going to be hearing from Minister Shaw. He's got a, an important welcome message for us. Then we'll be highlighting and showcasing the actual directory. And then we'll be bringing those, that directory to life via some amazing case studies illustrating the types of solutions that can be found on the directory. We'll then be hearing some insights on partnerships and collaborations from our Go Circular 2025 partner organisations and we'll be finishing by 1.30. So to start us off let's hear from Minister James Shaw. Tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to this online launch of Aotearoa New Zealand's first Circular Economy Directory. First of all, a huge congratulations to everyone involved in bringing this important tool to life. Moving to a circular economy will be a critical part of our response to the climate and biodiversity crises, but it won't be easy. No one business can make the shift alone particularly in a small market like New Zealand, located, as we are, at the very furthest reaches of global supply chains. Of course, that's where this new business-to-business -business directory is going to make a big difference. The directory connects businesses seeking circular solutions to businesses that can help them cut out waste, pollution and emissions, keep products and services in use, and help to regenerate nature. So. As of now, there is one place where you can find products and services that can help your business go circular. Innovations like this show us and the world what meaningful and ambitious and lasting climate action can look like. So again, I want to congratulate the Sustainable Business Network, along with the Ministry for the Environment, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, Auckland Council, Auckland Unlimited, Waste Management Limited and Amiomio. Aotearoa. The window of opportunity to clean up our act, cut our emissions and limit global warming is vanishingly small, but it is still there for the taking. Whether or not we seize that remaining chance comes down to the actions taken and the changes made by a great many people and businesses like you and yours. These changes over time will add up to a better, cleaner future. So whatever we can do to lower emissions and cut waste will make a difference. It all adds up. 
So thank you again and well done. Norera, tena koto, tena koto, tena tato kato. Well, thank you, Minister Shaw, for those um, introductory words. Much appreciated. Now, we know that for businesses to transition from a linear economy that has effectively been optimised for nearly 100 years to a circular one, they're going to need some help. Now, no one organisation can make that shift alone. And through working with our network over the last few years, it was abundantly clear that businesses didn't know where to look or how to find the circular solutions that they needed. And from our perspective, we knew that there was a load of circular solutions out there uh, that could help them. So it was really clear that there was an abundant need for a trusted go-to place to find businesses that can help realize circular economy opportunities. So we're absolutely delighted to launch our circular economy directory today. And we'll just have a bit of a preview of some of its features now. The new Circular Economy Directory is the go-to place to find organisations that can help your business design out waste, reduce carbon, keep materials in use and regenerate nature. We've made it simple. Already know what you're looking for? Start here. There are four key areas. Need help making your business more circular? These categories will make it easy. Or maybe you just want to search using a keyword. The directory includes more than 100 solutions and growing across a wide range of industries. Jump in and learn how they can help you. Icons representing the categories show at a glance how a solution could help your business today. Now you're on your way. Can't find what you're looking for? Let us know. We're here to help. Check our tips for using the directory. You can also learn more about the circular economy or be inspired by businesses already using circular economy solutions. And catch up on the latest news. Be part of the shift to a circular economy in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So we're extremely proud to be able to bring you this first of a kind directory and as you heard it's profiling over a hundred different organizations and collectively delivering hundreds of solutions and of course we're going to evolve uh, as we continue to list and list, list new solutions and loot new solutions emerge um, the directory will continue to grow as we transition to that circular economy we so desperately need to do. But to illustrate the types of solutions that you'll be able to find on the directory, we're delighted to be able to feature a number of case studies. So we're going to be hearing from Toby Skilton, CEO of Mutu Exchange, Rui Peng, Managing Director of Critical and Joe Youssef, Chief Encourager, All Heart NZ, and Ingrid Cronin Knight, GM Strategy, Customer and Sustainability Waste Management NZ. And first up, to share their solution, we welcome Toby. Awesome. Kia ora. Thanks, James. Uh, just. 
Cool. Yeah, so kia ora everyone. Uh, my name is Toby Skilton and I'm the founder of Mutu. And so we're a company that exists to enable the world's best organization to unlock the value of their assets. So just a little bit about me. So I'm Toby, um, I'm 26 years old and I grew up in a beautiful little town in the sunny Waikato called Te Aroha. I uh, spent four years down in Dunedin getting my degree for setting off overseas um, for about a year before ending up in Ototahi Christchurch, which is where I'm based now. Uh, a few fun facts about me. Um, I've spent the last seven or so years working on and off in South Africa as a park ranger, so working with lions, hyenas, leopards, cheetahs, giraffes, elephants. Um, I visited over 50 countries. Um, and I once ran for four hours, every four hours, for 48 hours. Um, and I guess the key difference between the first two facts and the last one is that I will not be doing the last one again. Um, I just wanted to give a bit of a sort of an overview of the journey to date. Um, it's certainly been a pretty um, interesting one. So we actually launched Mutu in 2019 as a peer-to-peer -peer rental marketplace platform. So think of Airbnb, but for everyday items. Um, I guess we wanted to create a world where people were less inclined to go out and buy new things by providing access to things that sort of already existed. Um, but as we grew, large organizations from around New Zealand began asking how they could use our platform to manage their assets in a more sustainable way. Uh, and so as a result of this, we created the Mutu Exchange launched late last year. Um, and I guess for us, we sort of found ourselves with this peer-to-peer -peer platform. We actually had a, a retail platform in between, which I won't dive too deep into. And then we've got this amazing business-to-business -business opportunity. And I guess for us as the Mutu team, we knew that impact was always a major priority for us. And we soon realized that the impact we could have in an organization's garage was gonna be far bigger than, it, than the impact we could have in an individual's garage. So we ended up deciding to go all in on our exchange opportunity, which is the opportunity I'm gonna tell you about today. So let's have a look at the problem. Now tucked away in storage rooms, warehouses, containers, they're incredibly valuable assets collecting dust and slowly appreciating a way to death. Now most large asset heavy organizations, both in the public and private sector, have a huge supply of assets and materials that are not being utilized efficiently, if at all. And the problem is that no one knows they exist or even what they're worth. So with outdated spreadsheets, confusing email chains and an antiquated systems being the current solution, these assets remain invisible and purchasers just keep on buying over and over again, which wastes time, it wastes money, it wastes space, and, and worst of all, it creates tons and tons of unnecessary waste. So good news, we can say goodbye to outdated spreadsheets, confusing email chains and inadequate systems because Mutu is here to make asset management not only simple, but enjoyable. So we've built the Mutu Exchange, which is a resource efficiency tool that allows employees of large organizations to find, use, or rehome their surplus resources. We help organizations paint a clearer picture of what they own and whether it's being used or not. Now our platform captures all of their existing and surplus resources to ensure that items aren't being unnecessarily purchased or ending up in landfill. And if an item can't be reused internally, we then enable our customers to build connections with other organizations in their sectors or businesses throughout the community to sell or lend those resources to. So we've been working with a number of sectors, but the one that is really thriving and one that I wanted to talk about today was the energy sector. So we've been working really closely with a number of energy distribution businesses, but the main one being Transpower. Now, waste is a key challenge area of Transpower sustainability strategy. And they know that although equipment might have reached the end of its practical life as a Transpower asset, there is often substantial value that still remains either with the actual electrical network assets, such as circuit breakers, transformers, relays, or the associated equipment like relay cabinets, poles, and cable. Now, they can, these can continue to serve a useful purpose elsewhere, either within their own organization or throughout other energy distribution businesses throughout New Zealand. So there are also assets that become surplus from different projects that definitely could be reused throughout the business internally or on future projects. But since there are really informal storage mechanisms, it's very difficult to find these things, which means new assets are procured for future projects, whilst those surplus resources remain completely out of sight and unused. So as we know, this is a very linear system, but one that Transpower is hugely motivated to move away from. So how does Mutu solve this problem? Now, Transpower 
now has their own centralized hub, which means their employees can easily check what they need already exists, as well as finding a home for something they no longer need. So instead of storing surplus assets informally or disposing of them, they can seamlessly load them onto the exchange for other employees to see and use within Transpower. And if they decide that the item doesn't have a reuse opportunity within their business, they're able to open it up to other energy companies throughout New Zealand who can get value from it. So with visibility and access to their own internal resources, valuable, valuable assets become available again. Now, Mutu helps Transpower paint a much clearer picture of what they already own and whether it could be used or not. Our platform makes sure that items aren't being unnecessarily purchased or ending up in the landfills. We then enable Transpower to, go, to build connections with other energy businesses throughout New Zealand to sell, lend or donate those resources to. So what does success look like? Now Transpower has been looking for a circular solution that will help them get as much value as possible out of their end of life assets or surplus materials across their business. By using the Mutu Exchange, Transpower is looking to achieve three main business outcomes. They want visibility and real-time information about their surplus resources, which in turn gives them increased visibility and utilization and maximizing the value from that asset. They want to have a company-wide process for reuse, which will help them transition towards a circular economy and reducing items that still have value ending up in landfill. And they also want to create a clear pathway for end of service or end of life assets, which will reduce the amount of stuff that's just aimlessly lying around. Now, we launched the initiative within Transpower just over a week ago. Um, there's already 40 active users and about 20 listings on there, which is really promising with new items going up each day. So every organization in the public and private sector needs to be moving towards a system and an economy by which we do not waste things. We need to be creative, collaborative, and circular focused with our existing resources. By surfacing and reusing your organization's resources, there's a greater emphasis placed on maintaining and repairing these items, which means there is less demand to purchase new ones. Now we need to see the leaders of our largest and most influential organizations thinking about the impact their business has on the people that work there, the community it operates in, and the amount of waste it creates. But before we can have a true circular economy, we must create a connected economy, one that connects the public and private sectors, startups, community groups, and small businesses. Now, everyone won't be participating in the circular economy all of the time, but they will need to be connected to it to create the most efficient pathway for reuse, to stimulate innovation, to boost socioeconomic growth, and to most importantly, save our planet. Now we're Mutu and our mission is to build a connected economy and to unlock the value of assets. And we want you all on this amazing journey with us. Now, if anyone on this call works for an asset rich, multi-location organization that has fragmented processes and systems for managing their assets, they value sustainability, the circular economy, and they're motivated to collaborate with other organizations with similar resources, I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, thank you very much, James and to SBN for hosting this this session and for everyone here listening and if i have time i look forward to answering any questions yeah brilliant thanks so much toby a great um, amazing innovation i suppose that that call out to organizations who who met meet that criteria i think there might be a a few a few out there is it you, you've talked about the um energy sector is it is there any other types of sectors you think would be ripe for such a, an innovation yeah, 100%. So we're working closely with different higher education facilities, so universities and polytechs. Uh, we're working closely with city councils. Um, we've also been working with airports. Um, I think there's opportunity as well for the health system, for different DHBs. Um, but I guess we're, we're being very cautious just to, to really hone in on those key sectors. Now, I think for us, we know that probably most sectors could benefit from this. We know that construction, there is a huge opportunity here, especially for you know, decarbonisation, helping with leftover surplus materials from projects. How do we you know, use a, a platform like ours to encourage reuse as opposed to disposal? Um, but yeah, so, that, so there's lots, but I think those are the key ones that we're, we're looking to focus on at the moment. Excellent. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much, Toby. And I suppose the, 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 the amount of effectively invisible assets across the country um, within this sort of large organizations and their structures must be quite phenomenal. I don't know uh, if you have any uh, insights into what sort of um, size that of value that that would be probably uh, 
quite astonishing. I do, I do indeed. Uh, it was actually MYOB has released an amazing report on one thing that's called ghost and zombie assets, which is always a bit of fun when we start our calls with organisations. Going to tell them and talk about ghosts and zombies. Um, but basically ghosts are assets that are invisible within your business, but do live on your books. So you're, they're depreciating away, you're paying to store them, you're paying to insure them, but you have no idea where they are, they're just looming around. And zombies are much worse. Those are assets that have been purchased, uh, have never made it onto any books or systems, and, and they're just roaming around the business. So people would know where they are, but they're not accounted for. And that makes up about 30% on average of, of an organization's assets. So if you scale that across the country, I think we can start to, to, to get an idea of the challenge here. So yeah, we're excited to, to kind of take on those ghosts and zombies. That's where we play. Um, yeah, and as I said, looking forward to talking with anyone who, um, who thinks we could help. Fantastic. Thank you, Toby. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get rid of those ghosts and, and eliminate those zombies for sure. Thank you so much for, yeah, for sharing. Sure, James, thank you. Now, it's now my pleasure to introduce Rui Peng, the Managing Director of Critical. Kia ora, Rui. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe. Let me share my screen. Can everyone see this okay? Awesome. Uh, te whare nui uh, tū nei tēnā koe. Uh, I ngā maunga, ngā awa, ngā whenua, te moana i takatō nei tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, tēnā koutou ngā tangata whenua au tēnei Aotearoa, uh, tēnei te tēnei te mihi ki a koutou uh, i te tautoko te kaupapa au tēnei hui. Uh, ka nui te koa, uh, me te hare uh, ki te tūtaki i a koutou uh, ngā mihi, ngā mihi, ngā mihi. Um, so tēnā koutou katoa, my name is Rui and I'm one of the co-founders at Critical. So we are a clean tech company on a mission to end global plastic pollution by accelerating the transition towards circular building materials. As a Māori business, um, uh, the, the Modi of Taiao, um, it's, it's incredibly important. It defines sort of the well being of the land. And, and, and in Tao Maori, the well being of the land is effectively the well being of people. And you don't need to be Maori to feel this yourself. And so we co founded Critical because we wanted to be good ancestors um, so that our future uh, tamariki or, or future generation can not only prosper for the next 100 years, but for the next 1,000 years. And this is, I guess, um, our ngako or our, our why we exist and do what we do. I actually want to start off with a really quick story. Um, in 1894, the Times once predicted that in 50 years, every street in London would be buried under nine feet of manure. The, the problem was horse waste. The International Urban Planning Mission at the time couldn't find a solution, and it's pretty funny now, but it seemed that urban civilization was doomed. Today, the world produces nearly a thousand times of plastics each year, and 9% is only 9% is recycled. A plastics problem feels a bit like horse shit, doesn't it? In New Zealand, businesses are responsible for approximately over 83% of all plastics are landfill, and construction is one of the biggest culprits. But we as customers, investors, and employees are inspiring businesses to take ownership, which is, which is one of the reasons why public um, zero waste commitments have been made for the coming decade and beyond. Uh, Critical has built a technology platform to transform all 24 types of plastic waste into our first product, the Critical Cleanstone, a range of beautiful and durable 100% recycled plastic panels for building fit-outs. It is the eco-disruptor to the 938 billion global timber and fiberboard market. Our Unibon technology turns contaminated plastics into panels that can take a beating, while offsetting approximately 1.4 tons of carbon for every ton of plastics recycled, if we're considered to be on a global supply chain. We can then endlessly customize material and feel to create unique brand stories. And at the end of life, we buy back our panels and recycle them into new clean stones again and again and again. Our long-term goal is to support critical microfactories in every city in the world, starting in Aotearoa. In 2019, so when the government passed the law banning the, the use of single-use plastics in New Zealand, the warehouse group had 50,000 retail plastic bags left and made the decision to store them in, until a sustainable solution could be found. Out of the 24 um, of plastics used in Aotearoa, New Zealand only had usually four types that are recycled. So in partnership with Warehouse Group, Critical transformed the group's 50,000 plastic bags into approximately 40 clean stone panels used for countertops, doors, uh, feature walls and retail fixtures in the fit out of Torpedo 7's new uh, store in Newmarket, Auckland. Um, David Benatar, who's the Chief Sustainability Officer for the Warehouse Group, said that the, said that the project uh, is a perfect example of businesses working together to innovate with circular solutions. 
Um, and, and, and I quote, the warehouse group is prioritizing the reduction of plastic waste in our packaging while in parallel investing in the expansion of post-consumer waste solutions. Through our partnership with Critical, we are not only able to divert soft plastics out of landfill, um, but also create a practical and great looking product for use in our store fit outs. Um, based on some educated assumptions, through conversations we've had with retailers, commercial brands, and restaurant brands, the total cost of ownership of Critical Clean Stone works out to be a bit more, um, I wish I can get rid of this, but work out to be more affordable than NDF at year 10, as it is a more durable product that is easy to maintain with a closed loop solution at the end of life. And because Clean Stone panels use plastic waste belonging to the business, the cost of landfill which is estimated to increase about 5x in, in approximately the next two or three years is negated. So while there is an upfront investment, the mid to longer term benefit outweigh the cost. We understand that businesses have problems with plastics and zero waste commitments that's not easy to solve. Not only that, they have a durable product. Uh, they want a durable product for the job while being able to tell a great story to their customers. So we developed the critical clean stone with, with the hopes of not only to solve these issues, but to also solve one of the biggest pollution crises of our generation. It took only 12 years to solve the great horse manure crisis of 1894. We are looking for introductions to the head sustainability of big businesses to partner with us before this shit hits the fan. Noreira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou. Good. Thanks so much uh, for sharing that, that Rui, and a, a great a great story to kick kick things off off there. Hey, and I love the the fact that you're using illustrating that total cost of ownership um, to, to to see where that 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 financial benefit comes in. I, I'm wondering, are you seeing that there's a a shift in attitudes uh, over the years you've been working in this space um, that businesses now have towards plastics? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think while um... While still like the, the mandates for sustainability is still at a fairly young stage, um, the fact that I think one of the earlier um, workshops I've been to was, was saying that well, by 2035, 85% um, of the global economy will be controlled by millennials. And we make purchasing decisions based on what's good for people and the land. And we are, and we are demanding and asking and inspiring of, that, of our businesses today. And so it's a huge shift, but not only that, um, there's a, there's a growing changing demographic of investors who are investing in those very companies, asking to see that, those impact in their reports. And so it's, it's, it's becoming more and more of a, of a direct, um, I guess, impact um, to, to, to more and more what we're seeing bottom lines for businesses. But it's still, it's still young, but it'll be very normal very soon. Well, that's great to hear. Well, love the solutions you're providing, Rui, and it's great to hear that direction of travel travel with regards to how businesses are starting to interact and, and look at the um, developing those solutions we need. So thank you so much. Yeah, me, James. Right. Appreciate the opportunity. And now my pleasure to introduce the next case study and introduce Joe Youssef, Chief Encourager at All Heart. Kia ora, Joe. Kia ora. Kia ora, everyone. I'll just share my screen. Hope everybody can see that. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, ngā mihi ātū nāku ki a koutou, e rotu a manaakitangi e tō tātou mātou a nui te rangi. Uh, ko mā tātou a tāku waka, ko ngā puhi tāku iwi, ko ngā tahini tāku hapu. Uh, um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Joe and I am the Chief Encourager and Founder of All Heart NZ and yes that is my official title, Chief Encourager, my official legal title for working with All Heart NZ. All Heart NZ is an enterprise of hope, we specialise in corporate sustainability and the other side of the coin for us is community and environmental support and I'll talk a little bit about that today through this presentation. Joe, um, you might... Uh need to share your screen if you're showing some slides. I have, sorry. Let's just try that. I'll get out of here. <clears throat> try that again. There Can we go. Perfect. There we go. That better? There we go. Brilliant. All right. We're on. We're on now. Good start. Um, so a little bit about All Heart NZ. So what we do just on the right-hand side here, uh, All 
Part NZ partners with corporates to practically redirect and repurpose their redundant and pre-loved items. So this is all about items at the end of their life, unlike um, uh, Mutu, which focus on the internal items. Uh, at the end of their life, uh, when a corporate has finished with them, what do they do with those items? And it's any and all items, and I'll talk about it a little bit through this presentation. Our reduced partnerships help to further develop the sustainable and ethical side in the social aspects of procurement and supply chain management, and we're really excited about that. Why we do what we do on the bottom there, improving the ways we both source and dispose of stuff will positively impact our planet and the lives of people who help produce at the beginning of the life, reuse and dispose of it. And we have literally thousands of case studies now to prove this out. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. So All Heart NZ offers three services to our corporates throughout Aotearoa. Our first service is redirection. It's absolutely beautiful. Just to talk a little bit about redirection, we pick up all around Aotearoa anything a corporate has with full logistics services, project management services, freight services. It doesn't matter what they've got, if it's the end of their life and they think it should be avoiding landfall, All Heart NZ is there to support that corporate in their, in their efforts. So we've now worked with over 2,000 corporates across Aotearoa. We've moved more than 3,750,000 kgs. We measure in kgs because it sounds way more impressive than tons. Uh, we've supported on the other side of the coin, 439 different communities around Aotearoa, up in the South Pacific, and now around the globe, which is really, really awesome. We have three resource rescue hubs, uh, corporate research, research, rescue hubs around Aotearoa, one in uh, Monaco, and uh, Cavernous Drive, one in Albany, and one up in Kaikohe. And we have three more that are well in planning uh, that we'll be establishing in Wellington. We've been in Wellington now, if we could find a building, but we can't. If you know of a building in Wellington, please let me know. So we're establishing a resource rescue hub in Wellington, in Kaitaia, and in Waitara. And that will be up and running before the uh, before the end of this year, actually. And so we're really excited about those hubs because they don't only create the on-the-ground circular solution for a lot of the redundant items that corporates and construction have. It creates living wage employment from those items, volunteerism, training opportunities for people that are really struggling to get employment. So again, that social change objective coming from environmental sustainability from a corporate level. It's just it's beautiful. So um, we equate that to over $9 million, almost 10 million of funds raised or saved by our communities and the not-for-profit sector, all through our corporate sustainability efforts. And we've been really successful in redirecting 93.8%. That's including our own rubbish since the moment we started All Heart NZ. Our second service is repurpose. So these are for items that are, um, are not as easy simply to reuse and redirect to a direct use. These are items that um, either in-house or through strategic partnerships, we have created a repurposing program for corporate partners. This includes a sustainable solution for corporate textiles and uniforms, uh, plastic, cardboard, polystyrene, large size NDRF, I should say large size board, any board or wood, e-waste and sustainable deconstruction program uh, and construction recovery resource. And that's that is currently limited to um, our own capacity because we have to sustainably deconstruct it. We're also through our reduced department educating other brands in order to know how to sustainably deconstruct because the sector, which is 50% of the waste going to landfill construction, um, is, is very young and learning how to do that. And so that's our reduced service. Our reduced service uh, is from an in-house sustainability development team. We have about a half a dozen or a dozen actually sustainability specialists that work with us. Some of the things we're currently involved in with our corporates are carbon measurement and reduction programs, designing out plastic and PPE stewardship programs, waste minimization, design and implementation, design implementation and education for supply chain minimization. So a lot of people will know some of the big brands that are out there minimizing the waste they're buying. So you see a lot of seeing a lot less plastic on the stores. So it's not a problem at the end of the life if we were design it out. That's where we focus our reduced service. And sustainable deconstruction. Deconstruction is something we're really hitting, but not just from a practically doing it and recovering the resources, but educating other construction companies as to how to sustainably deconstruct, i.e. not with a digger, so that you can recover the resources and they can have a second life. 
So the um, case study today was uh, that's alive on there is Office Max. Office Max has been our partner since 20, 2019. They're a fantastic partner that uses all three of our services. So we have uh, hundreds of businesses that use one or more of our services, but Office Max has been using all three and is developing their sustainability processes. And they're just a really exciting business to work with. So the problem they had, and this is how the case study goes, was like the problem of any large corporate across Aotearoa. They, they had and their clients had just heaps and heaps of stuff. So end of life products, this is literally outside next to a tip and we're recovering them. Um, E-waste, um, office furniture, and I mean thousands of items and I've got a count for you. End of life, brand new end of line stock, which again, for, for our corporates, our large corporates, this is the problem that they face and Office Max not only faced that internally, they also faced it with the clients that they were selling into and wanted a sustainable answer. So come along their partnership with Allhard NZ. So in 2019, Office Max became an impact partner of Allhard NZ. Allhard NZ provides Office Max and its clients a framework to redirect and repurpose new and used items. This covers the full range of Office Max products. Allhard NZ also provides uh, works with Office Max sustainability team to find circular solutions for those items that are not easily reusable and innovative solutions. We're working on some really innovative solutions at the moment alongside some of our other partners. And uh, that will become more public soon with some of this product stewardship programs we're establishing for them. That, that byline was written by Office Max, so it's not just us bragging about ourselves. And so um, what has that looked like? What has the outcome been for Office Max as, as an example of one of the corporates we work with? The benefits, 55 initiatives from Invercargill to Whangarei, so 55 different engagements with Office Max or their clients from Invercargill to Whangarei. We've redirected um, and, and uh, provided logistics and project management around Aotearoa for them for office furniture, kitchen items, flooring, storage items, medical equipment, hand sanitizer, and just you name it, we uh, pick it up and find a sustainable solution. Those um, engagements have ranged from simply two items to 300,000, and 300,000 was actually uh, leftover hand sanitizer, and I can talk publicly about that, that was public. Um, so as far as the count, because we measure and count all the stuff so we can report back to the client and work with them on changing behaviours through our reduced department, is 27,970 office items, that's everything from plants, flooring to chairs and, and um, tables, 450 different pallet loads, on, on those pallet loads is hundreds, if not thousands of items, equating to 106,000 kgs of stuff. The community impact value, because again, our hearts is to create corporate sustainability solutions that both impact our environment and social change. That community value was 138,000 for Office Max um, to date, and that, that number has already changed because we work with them weekly. So that's a little bit about All Heart NZ um, Aotearoa. Uh, we specialize in corporate sustainability and community and environmental support or impact. Uh, I'm Joe Yusuf. Um, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tō, tātou katoa. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thanks so much for sharing that, Joe. It's quite a, quite a broad remit you have there, and it's brilliant to see those, those impact measures um, and the fact that, that, that you're expanding. I suppose, it, obviously, the, um, the sort of finding end-of-life solutions is, um, you know, a key requirement. Wondering, is there is there one particular item that that sort of stands out for you that you really had to sort of um, be innovative to, to to try and find a, a a useful home for? I don't know if there's one particular thing that yeah. um, gave you a challenge. Yeah, uh, look, there isn't a, there there hasn't been as far as the reuse goes. I mean, um, it's for us, it's been everything from a hundred meter stage to fencing to Door, you know, like a lot of it is actually easily reusable. You've just got to have the networks established in order to rehome those items. Probably the harder, under the repurpose, the harder items such as plastic. And that that um, one that Rui put up with Torpedo 7, we introduced um, um, Rui and the team in order for them to provide that solution. So again, with the Warehouse Group is one of our signed impact partners. And so finding those resources that... They have lots and lots of and finding a genuine circular and sustainable and scalable opportunity. MDF would be one of those. So one of our clients alone has 50 tons of MDF a month. And so that's not a small number and that's quite large scale. So finding, so it's not really the, 
reusable items, it's more that resource that what do you do with it? How do you create scaled um, uh, marketplaces for that? And, and those are the repurposed things that we've created markets for. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much uh, for sharing that, that Joe. Uh, brilliant to he hear and see those uh, impacts. So for our final case study, it's a pleasure to introduce Ingrid Cronin-Knight, GM Strategy, Customer and Sustainability at Waste Management um, NZ. So welcome, Ingrid. I think I got to go mongo fo topo mona ko natia tero topo iwi ko white mata topo moana ko tamaki makoro topo rohi ko ingo ko night topo ingua. It's a pleasure to be here with you. We're absolutely delighted to be um, an impact partner in this um, development. I thought I'd share a, a case study that we're really proud of. But uh, just given Rui's one, I just thought that I would um, go back a little bit in time. Uh, for you, uh, and that is, we've been hauling um, and carting things since uh, 1894, and uh, back then, whilst we've got EVs in our truck fleet, one horsepower was the fleet that we started off with, uh, but um, but we, in the 80s, we introduced the sidearm loader, which is I'm going to talk a little bit about today, because uh, that's really important from an innovation perspective, because we also in introduced the wheelie bin. Uh, and from a plastics perspective, which I'm going to talk about, that's pretty critical. But what we do uh, from a waste management perspective is uh, we've got quite a big circular economy we already empower. We, you know, we pick up over a million um, tonnes of waste and uh, particularly food and garden waste. We turn that into living earth, into organic compost, which gets reused. Uh, and then we ship, um, you know, uh, could be glass, could be cardboard, et cetera, for recycling. And even tyres, we you know we pick up old tyres, 10,000 tonnes of those and, and turn them into uh, derived tyre fuel, which is, is quite, quite challenging. But the case study that I really wanted to talk about, which I'm really passionate about um, us launching, is uh, about what we're doing about our old uh, wheelie bins. So having introduced wheelie bins into the country in um, the 80s, uh, and so before that, and people still do this today, but they'd be, they'd be um, picking up bins and hauling them over into the garbage truck. Well, now um, we introduced the side loader, but we also introduced the wheelie bins. And, and because they're so large, uh, from a plastics perspective, we don't have off the shelf um, ways to, to process those. So we do know, and some of you know that I'm a cricketer, was a white firm, but um, some of you know that uh, you know plastics we create, every person in New Zealand creates 159 grams of plastics, which is about the weight of a cricket ball. Uh, and so that's over 280,000 tonnes that go to landfill. And what we've done here is we've picked up uh, a machine which literally allows us to grind up uh, these large willy bins right up to a hundred and uh, 660 litre willy bin. Uh, and um, and we've, you know, we're not on a, a large global uh, uh, search to, to find a piece of machinery that could actually process these. Because part of the problems we've had in New Zealand is that large plastics, uh, you either had to get to a, a hacksaw or a skill saw to cut them up to be able to process by off the shelf grinding machines. And so with what we've implemented here in Tauranga, uh, we've and we've stockpiled 50,000 wheelie bins uh, and we're processing through them is that we chip them uh, into small pallets. Uh, and so you can see that this is the first grinding run that we've run, uh, but they come out in small pallets that are sort of up to about uh, four centimetres long that can be, then be taken by uh, natural um, processing machines and then turned back into wheelie bins. Uh, but by analysing our value chain, uh, ultimately we saw this as a, a big opportunity for us to take care and be product stewards for our own um, services and uh, where these will go will be inputs into our suppliers for wheelie bins. Once we get through that backlog of about 50,000 um, wheelie bins, we're going to then put into the machine other things like drums or plastics um, pellets and then uh, the same thing, the output of it can then go back into plastic pellets. So it's a big win for us in New Zealand about addressing, addressing uh, large plastics. Uh, so we're very excited about it. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, in Ingrid. And it's it's great to see the investment that you know waste management's making in that infrastructure to be able to process onshore uh, plastic at the end of its life. And um, what are you interested in terms of you know the plans going forward? What what are the, what some of the reactions you're getting from 
from customers uh, around this opportunity? Well, what we hear from customers is that they want to know where their um, plastics end up. They want good supply chain and chain of custody reporting on it. Uh, and they also, as particularly like say something like constructions with PVC waste or other things, they want to process different types of materials. So we see um, good quality reporting, certification data, as well as the ability to process onshore as being things that customers are really interested in, but they want to do it at an economic price. Uh, and uh, contrary to what was said that, that, that landfill is going up five times, it's not the waste levy is going up five times, um, but, but still getting that secondary market, uh, I think at a economically you know, um, relative price is really important. Um, so as long as we can do that, uh, we've got a lot of demand for this. We've launched in Tauranga and we'll be launching one in Auckland soon. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, Ingrid. And we'll be um, we'll be seeing you in a in a couple of minutes as we uh, talk to our uh, partners. But uh, so we'll see you shortly, uh, Ingrid. Thank you. So, of course, these you, you know where to find uh, these solutions and and many more. So um, that's of course the circular economy directory. So. Um, happy viewing there. Now, what we what I like to do now is to introduce some key representatives from our amazing partners that, without which, we simply couldn't have produced this resource. So, be great if we could um, bring in um, Sam Buckle, Deputy Secretary of Waste and Resource Efficiency, the Ministry for the Environment. Chris Lizenga at the, uh, NZT Trade and Enterprise, a sustainability advisor. We'll warmly welcome back Ingrid from Waste Management M NZ, and we'll introduce Mark Roberts, Senior Waste Planning Advisor at Auckland Council, and then welcome Professor Eva Collins at the Waikato Management School, a key researcher uh, for Amia Mio Aotearoa. So welcome. And thank you sincerely for the support you've been giving us over the uh, development of this uh, directory. So great to be in this position. Um, but really, what, what I'd say, love to get your perspectives on, and we'll, we'll, we'll go and uh, ask each of you in, in turn, is really what, um, what, you know, why is partnering on the Circular Economy Directory important to your organization, for, to your perspectives and objectives that you're trying to um, to meet. So, Sam, perhaps we can go to you first to get a pers your perspective. Kia koutou. Uh, ko Sam Buckle, toko ingoa, uh, tumua ki tūrua, manfu mokataio. Um, first, thanks, James, um, for uh, the invitation to be part of the launch. Um, doing great things here. Uh, and just a shout out to all of the um, presenters as well. Uh, yeah, uh, super impressive, the amount of uh, creativity, savvy, and actually energy too. I can feel that coming through. So yeah, um, really impressive. Um, I think supporting the, um, uh, the directory is a bit of a no brainer uh, from an empathy perspective. You know, if you think about what we're trying to achieve at the moment, um, there's a huge amount of alignment. Uh, so um, you know, lots of what we're focused on um, in the funding and uh, policy space uh, relates to um, creating stronger circular mindsets, circular behaviours, circular technologies, driving circular responsibility, um, what, whether via you know, the draft strategy that we're consulting on, product stewardship schemes, recycling, proposed container return scheme, you know, the focus of our waste minimization and plastics innovation funds. And actually just a little uh, mention of the plastics innovation fund, cool innovative um, circular ideas relating to plastic. Um, have a look at that. Um, so, and I think, it, but as you'll appreciate, you know, MFE or well, the government uh, can only go so far um, and, and delivering on those outcomes. Uh, so much depends on you know, decisions and behaviors of individuals and businesses. Um, you know, and so much of our circular agenda, you know, depends on you know, a mixture of the following, um, connecting organizations, creating networks, generating visibility of what's possible and available, matching supply and demand, uh, generating critical mass to 
enable things to be viable um, and give, you know, sort of giving circularity the scale to be successful. So I certainly see the directory as um, playing a really important part um, in that respect and sort of giving that opportunity for great ideas, great service, great innovation, technology to be brought to life effectively. So yeah, really uh, pleased to be able to support the launch today for those reasons, James. Kia ora. Kia ora. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Uh, yeah, really appreciate the, the, the support. And so from, from one sort of gov government agency to another, we let, let's hear from um, Chris at uh, NZTE from your perspective on cool. um, partnering. Thanks so much, James. And totally echo what Sam said. There's some amazing case studies and presenters here today. At NZTE, we help connect New Zealand businesses with the world. We're an exporting nation, which means we have to respond to what's happening around the world in order to adapt, to stay relevant, and to continue to be recognized as innovators on the world stage. We're seeing firsthand the growing importance of the circular economy around the world, especially in some of our key export markets like the US, the EU, Australia, some key export markets in Asia. Although we're seeing countries all around the world quickly following in what is a global shift towards more sustainable business practices. The pace in some countries is also pretty staggering. I mean, this month alone, the European Commission is proposing new rules to make textiles sold in the EU more durable, repairable, reusable and recyclable as they clamp down on fast fashion. Um, but these kinds of regulatory requirements, as well as soaring consumer demand overseas for more circular goods and services, is a key reason why us at NZTE got initially really excited about the prospect of a business to business circular directory, as well as a wider program to support circular development in Aotearoa. Before this role at NZTE, I was also based in Europe, working in the apparel industry and helping businesses to adopt circular business models. So I got to see firsthand just how much more accessible it is in Europe or in North America for any individual company to tap into the solution providers around them, making the whole ordeal that much more straightforward, scalable and affordable. Of course, New Zealand is a much smaller country and we can't do these things at the same scale as Europe, but I was surprised to find out how little support New Zealand businesses have within their own ecosystem here. And it is very difficult to your point earlier, James, circularity is very hard for any one business to do in isolation. Ultimately, though, Kiwi companies need to be prepared for a circular future and currently have an enormous opportunity to embrace the circular economy and be leaders on the world stage. We see today's launch as a really important milestone in helping businesses tap into the solutions around them, enabling collaboration and ultimately supporting their growth for the good of the country. Despite everything going on, uh, as a country, we still have a clean and green reputation overseas. So let's try to do our best to actually live up to it. Thanks. Very good. Well, um, yeah, totally uh, changing environment on, on that global level. So um, being able to, to, to keep up with that is absolutely imperative for our, for our exporters. But thank, thank you, Chris, for those uh, words and, and for your support. So, let, I mean, let's let's hear from a, a business perspective, and you know, Ingrid and uh, the waste management. The um, you know why why partnering on the circular economy directory is is important for for waste management. We absolutely believe in uh, reducing you know, the impacts of climate change and and being a, a very heavy uh, transport industry. What we've realised is being at the end of the value chain of most people's processes by picking up your waste, uh, as, as you've seen it, is that uh, equity of information is really important. So we have quite a lot of data and information around uh, the composition of weights, the, you know, well into, um, where they go, but to change things, we need good product stewardship right up front and then people to make good decisions. And there's no way we could have um, you know, done that kind of an outcome uh, alone. So by partnering uh, with, uh, both community organisations, yourself, SBN, uh, and, and government partners, we, we to pivot our economy from the kind of linear approach it is to the circular economy is going to take all of our efforts. But is a massive change, and what we've been able to do with this directory, I think, is is provide equity of information so people are better informed to make better choices right through that value chain. 
Brilliant. Thank you. And that, yeah, that equity of information and making uh, better choices is exactly what, what we're looking um, to, to try and do. So um, thank you, Ingrid, for your support. And then it'd be interesting to hear from uh, the perspective of uh, Auckland Council and a city perspective in, in why partnering on this resource um, is important. Mark. Uh, kia ora, James. Kia ora, everybody. Uh, Auckland has uh, an aspiration to be zero waste by 2020, um, taking care of people in the environment and importantly, turning what we think of waste into resources. Um, it's vital that we strengthen our relationships and our partners partnerships um, to make that goal happen. Um, and certainly our experience um, on our own internal sustainability, um, particularly in the area of construction and demolition waste, um, is completely underpinned by us developing partnerships and collaborations. As Chris mentioned, no one business can do this on its own. Um, the era of the linear economy is kind of being challenged full on now by the circular economy. And every day it feels like um, at Council, we are seeing uh, new companies, social enterprises, um, innovating new processes um, and repurposing um, what they kind of once saw as waste into new um, interesting commodities and products and services. Um, and I think perhaps from a, um, a region-wide perspective, um, this also aligns really neatly with Te Ao Māori, uh, the tradition of kaitiakanga um, as an act of obligation for us to sustain and restore our collective resources um, that we have available to us. So um, we're really, really pleased to be um, joining with uh, Waste Management, um, NZTE, um, Amomio, and uh, MFE and SPN on this really, really exciting tool that'll strengthen those relationships, build those partnerships that we need for the circular economy to flourish. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mark, and um, great to have your support. Thank you. And so let's um, move to our, our, our last panellist, uh, Eva, from our research partner, Mia Mio Aotearoa. Kia ora, James. Um, as James said, I'm from Mio Mio Aotearoa, hosted by Waikato University. It's an MB-funded multidisciplinary research program looking at circularity in New Zealand, underscored by the principles of Maturanga Māori, our goal, which is very aligned with the circular directory, is to help businesses increase well being by designing out waste and pollution, keeping products and materials in use, and restoring natural systems. And we've heard a lot about those things this afternoon. Finally, Emil Mio Aotearoa is on a mission, strong word, but appropriate here, on a mission to create a new blueprint for change based on our research with a particular focus on the construction and packaging industries. And the Circular Economy Directory is helping us achieve this goal by facilitating meaningful ways for us to connect with business. Thanks. Well, thank you uh, so much, Eva, and thank you to all our partners and uh, just providing some in insights into, into what this partnership means uh, for you. It obviously means that we can deliver this, this directory. So we're racing up towards our 1.30 finish. So we will um, I'll just start to conclude uh, the, the, the session. And there's just a few um, points to, to, to make from now. I want to just give a bit of a shout out to some other activity that's coming up uh, from the SBN. And there's lots, lots of um, resources and events that you can access via sustainable.org.nz. But in particular, if you're an organization starting out on your sustainability journey, I can highly recommend getting involved in our Starting on Sustainability workshop series. Um, it's, it's starting this month and will be led by my expert colleagues. And we'll be addressing all those key issues that businesses need to address uh, to develop their sustainable performance, including uh, the circular economy, which uh, we have a particular focus on on Wednesday the 4th. 
So just remains for me to um, thank all of you for coming and joining us today. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our partners. We really uh, want you to use this resource, share with your networks and access those amazing solutions that you can find on there. This has been a, a, a Herculean effort uh, by the team at SBN to deliver this uh, directory as we see today. And a special thank you to the, the team at, at, at SBN, in particular Annie, Kate, Jazz, Phil, Fiona, Patricia, Victoria and the team at um, Terabyte. So um, thank you. Please do check out the directory. And I will now close with a um, karakia. Unia, unia, unia kiti uru taponui, kia watia, kia mama tinakao, te tinana te warao, kiti te ara tangata, koira e rongo, whakarihia ake ki runga, kia tina, tina, uie, taekia. Kia ora.